Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I thought this week we would again work on another modeling tutorial part. I don't plan to do these all the time, but the last one was received pretty well, and I thought going forward it might be fun to work these in every so often. This example is a part that I do in my Intro to Parametric Modeling class, and if you're ever interested in a class like that, you can find it on my website by going to MechanicalAdvantage.com training and looking through there's some CAM classes for mill and lathe and there's also a CAD class and we can do custom things if anybody ever wants to. So before I dive into this part, I would like everybody to take a second and just look at it and put a mental game plan about how you might go ahead uh, to model this part. All right, you got a good idea how you're gonna do it? I'm gonna jump in and show you how I'm gonna go about doing this part. I'm gonna start out by sketching on the front plane and then I'm gonna create a circle with the outer diameter of four inches. Now, typically a lot of people want to draw the rest of the features in this sketch and either uh, draw them all out one by one or pattern them in the sketch. Almost anybody who looks at this part can see that there's some patterns in this, specifically a circular pattern. But this is all I'm gonna draw for now. I'm just gonna do a four inch circle and that's where I'm gonna start. stop. I'm now gonna extrude this and I'm going to extrude that region, and I might do this slightly different as well. Uh, instead of going one direction, I'm going to extrude this symmetrically. And you'll see why I want to do that that way a little bit later. My symmetric options are either to do a half length, in which case whatever me measurement I enter is from the center line out, or I can do a whole length so I can just tell Fusion the total thickness of the part I want. In this case, the part thickness I'm going to use is 0.25 and I'll go ahead and choose OK. And there's my first feature on the part. The next thing I'm going to do is start working on the cuts. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the front face and I wanna draw a couple of construction circles to start out with. If you don't know, construction circles are meant to help you create geometry, but you can't do things like extrude or revolve or sweep or loft them. They're only, they're only visual aids to help you locate things. So I'm gonna start the circle command and I'm gonna turn on construction and I'm gonna anchor to the origin and my first construction circle is gonna be two inches. I'm gonna start another circle as construction and drag this one out and this one's gonna be 5.14 inches. And those are the two construction circles that I want to draw. Now that I'm done with my construction, I'm gonna turn the construction type back off and I'm ready to go and draw a line. Uh, you may have saw this in a previous video I've done called Secrets of the Line Command, but if we look at the line command, you'll notice that there's an arc attached onto the line. And that's because we can draw arcs at the same time as we draw lines with this command. So I'm going to start out by starting the line command. In my first click, I don't need to be too careful. I just want to be somewhere where I see the X on the outer diameter of my solid object. I'm going to click and I'm gonna move my mouse down. I'm not holding the mouse or anything like that. And I wanna stop either short or I wanna go past that construction circle. I do not wanna stop on it because then I'm not gonna be able to adjust my length after that. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stop just a little bit short and I'm gonna left click and hold. And now I can swing into an arc and I'm just gonna kinda of drag this out. Now, if I'm careful, I can get the constraint I want. I'm gonna go past a little bit just so you can see that I don't get the constraint I want. And I'm gonna finish this up by drawing straight up in the air and I can go ahead and click. When I draw a shape like this, one of the things that I do, it's almost as important as the geometry that I drew, is to look at the different constraints that have been applied. If we look at this, I know each of these two ends is coincident to the outer point of the circle because I see the black dots there. I know that there's a vertical constraint applied to this leg and there's a tangent constraint applied between the vertical line and the arc. I can also see that there's a parallel constraint between this line and this line. And if I hit the escape key to get out of it, if I click on any of these constraints, it should show me the things that are participating in that particular constraint. Here you can see that I missed a tangent constraint though, so I can just go and add that tangent. And those are the things that I'm looking for when I'm creating shapes like this. Now, I also know that the center point of this arc is gonna lie on this construction circle. So to make those two points common, I'm gonna use the coincident constraint between that center point and the construction circle. As I drag and move things around now, you'll see that that point stays located on the construction circle, but 
I'm not getting the design intent that I want for the particular slot that I have. So what I want this slot is the left side and the right side to be symmetric to the green axis here. And my goal typically is to not draw construction geometry if I can help it. So there's a couple different ways that I can go about making this. I could probably make these two legs equal or the method that I'm going to use is I'm gonna add a vertical constraint between the origin and the center of the arc. Now, when I hit escape after I've done that and I drag on this, you can see as I drag my slot, the width changes, but it stays symmetric about the green axis. I can start my dimension command and click on my two vertical lines and that dimension is gonna be 0.5. And I see that my arc is now fully block constrained. And so I'm, I'm happy with that and I can move on to my next feature. Now I could go ahead and just extrude cut this and then work on my next pattern. But because there are six of these arcs and there's also six of those little half moon arcs that are on the part, I'm gonna do both of those at the same time. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a circle diameter circle and I want it to be, I want the center line to be on this X axis. So one of the common things I see is people try to put their circle exactly where they want it to go. I'm gonna move it off that axis just slightly and I'm just gonna kind of drag out a circle. I'm not gonna dimension it yet. And the reason for that is on the print, if you, if you, if you printed it out and you're looking, the radius is 0.9, but what I have is a diameter. And I could trim it, but I'm not gonna trim it and we'll talk more about that in a second. I'm gonna start the dimension command and then I'm gonna click on the circle and I'm not gonna place it yet. Before I place it, I'm going to right click and choose radius. Now I can simply click on where I want that dimension to be located and type in the 0.9 and I don't have to do any math to convert diameters to radiuses or vice versa. The circle is the right size, but it's not located in the right spot. I want the center point to be on this X axis. And a lot of people will try to use the coincident constraint between the center and the x-axis, but remember the x-axis is just a visual reference. It doesn't actually exist that way. So instead what I'm gonna do is a horizontal constraint using the vertical horizontal constraint between the origin and the center of that circle. And now that circle is black and fully constrained. I'll finish my sketch. Fusion takes me to home view. If it doesn't, just click on the home button. And now I can extrude the regions that I wanna cut. Again, I talked about I could have trimmed this out. I don't need to, Fusion doesn't need to. So by trimming this out, it just adds more steps for me to do when Fusion doesn't need me to do that for it. And I'll click on this other region. For the distance, the extents, I want this to go all the way through. And you see my arrow is pointing the wrong way. So I'm just gonna flip it so it cuts the right direction and then I can hit okay. So that was pretty simple. We just drew two little sketches sketched objects, I should say, and then we extruded them through to get us our features that we want. Now I need to pattern those around and I can certainly go to the create menu and choose the pattern and then go to the circular pattern flyout. But what I often like to do is just grab the rectangular pattern that's on my toolbar. And the reason I do that is because now you can change the type within the command. So it's easier for me just to click out on the toolbar and then choose circular instead of going through the flyout menus to get there. We have to pay attention to what Fusion wants to pattern. Right now it's asking me to pattern body. So this solid is my body. I don't wanna pattern that. I wanna pattern the cuts I made. So I could choose faces, but that would require me to click on one, two, three, four things. So I have to make four selections for this to work out. Instead, I'm gonna click on features. And if we look at my timeline, you see I had a sketch and then I made an extrude feature. And then I have another sketch and then I made another extrude cut feature. So I can either click on the feature in my canvas on my model, or I could select it out of my timeline. I'm just gonna click on that feature in the model and you'll see that it grabs all the faces with one click because they're all part of that feature. The next thing I have to do is specify my axis of revolution for this pattern. And so I could either use that green axis right there or I could use any round face. So I'm just gonna click on this round face and Fusion starts to make the pattern for me. I know I need six of these in total, so I'm just gonna hit the up arrow uh, until I get six and then I'll choose okay. And you can see very quickly, we've got the majority of this shape complete. The next thing that I'm going to do is create a sketch on the front face. And I'm gonna draw a circle. If you look on the lower right hand corner of your print, you'll see the outer diameter is 1.25. There's an inner diameter of 0.75, but I'm not gonna worry about that yet. I'll do that a little bit later. I'm gonna finish my sketch. And now I'm gonna extrude out that area 0.25 inches. 
and I'll go ahead and hit OK. And there's my disk, the little, little bore that I want. I know I want the same thing on the back side, and I could certainly go draw that. But before I do, I think what I will do instead, let me hit the home button here. I'm going to go and grab the fillet command, and I'm going to grab this edge right here and type in 0 0.0625. Now I could do this later on if I want uh, to both of these, but I was just gonna do this in one step. So now I have that on the front side, but I need that on the back side. To do that from the create menu, I'm gonna grab the mirror command. And one more time, I have to pay attention to what the mirror command wants to pattern. Right now it's trying to mirror bodies and I wanna appear mirror features. So I'm gonna choose features. And again, I could grab those on the model or I could go to my timeline and just click on the things that I want to mirror. Now I need to grab the mirror plane and remember early on when I said I wanted to do a symmetric extrusion. The reason for that is now there's a origin plane that lies on the midpoint of my body that I can select and I know if I click on that whatever happens on the back side is going to be the same as the front side. I could certainly extrude it one way and then go back and add a mid plane later, but I don't see any reason to add a mid plane when I already have an origin plane that I can put in the right spot and leverage it later on in my process. You might notice that it's hard to get to that plane. It's kind of hidden by the body. So there are a couple ways you can handle this. One is you can just temporarily go and turn the bodies folder off by clicking on the eye. And now you could select that plane and then go back and turn the bodies folder on. And now you, you'll see a preview of that on the back side. The other way you can do it, if I clear this, is I can kind of put my mouse over where that plane is and I'm gonna left click and hold until I see this menu come up called the select other menu. When I see the menu, I'm gonna stop left clicking. And now as I cycle through, you'll see potential choices that Fusion is making for me about Tamir. I wanna wait until the XZ plane is highlighted and I'll go ahead and click on that. And now I get that same preview on the back side. And I'll hit OK. Now we have the bore on the back side. So design intent question. If I ever want the thickness of this boss to be different on the back side, then mirroring it is not going to be the way that I want to go because whatever I do to the front side is going to happen on the back side. If I were to come and edit this feature and then make the thickness one inch, try that again, one inch, and I hit OK, automatically the feature on the back side is one inch. So if you ever want those to be different, then you don't want to do this with a mirror command. You'd want to repeat the process on the back side as a secondary feature. I'll go and change this back to my quarter inch thickness that I want. The last thing that I have to do is to put a hole through this part. And typically what I would see people do is create a sketch on the front face, and then they would come and they would draw out the hole diameter that they want, dimension it, and punch it through. I'm gonna delete that sketch off, and instead I'm I'm going to use the whole command, which I find to be far easier. I'm going to grab the whole command and the general tendency is to want to click exactly where you want the hole to go. I'm going to click on the face, but offset where I want the hole to go. Now I can click on that hole and drag it to the center point and you'll feel it snap there when you get your, uh, your point onto that waypoint. For my extents, I'm going to say I want to go all the way through. And now I just have to say I want that diameter of the hole to be 0.75. I'll hit OK. And there is your finished part. Nothing we did to complete this part was complicated. We come back and step through the part. We made a disc. We cut one feature through it. We patterned that feature. We created a boss. We added a fillet, mirrored both of those features at the backside, and then added a through hole. Our sketches were fairly simple to create. We created a, some features along the way. We made use of feature patterns to create this and mirrors, and we have our part done. Let me know what you thought of this part. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.